and friends. We're now into week five of our journey through the life of Joseph. And uh, we're sort of emphasising the ways that Joseph shows us Jesus. And Genesis chapter 41 continues on with this story. And where we left it off before in Genesis 40, we saw how Joseph was in prison, unjustly in prison, by the way. But Joseph interpreted the dreams of two men, Pharaoh's butler and baker. And you might remember that both of those men had dreams as well. And Joseph interpreted the dreams and told them what their fate was, as God had revealed it to him. And Joseph had a definite message from God for these men regarding their future as revealed by the dream. And as it worked out, the butler was spared and the baker was executed. And that's where we left off. Now you might remember towards the end of last week how Joseph asked the butler to remember him with a view to getting him released. So let's begin this morning with the last verse of chapter 40. Uh, here. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Now let's look at the first verse in our reading this morning. And then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. But Joseph was in prison forgotten by Pharaoh's butler for a further two full years. What do you think those two years were like for Joseph? Do you think he might have been disappointed? Maybe a little depressed after all the injustices that he had suffered? Do you think he might have, might have thought that God had let him down? No? No? He stayed faithful to the Lord in the midst of all this, even though it took two full years. So here's the question. Is there something of Joseph in every one of us who have undergone things like this? But friends, let's not shy away from the bigger story here. Aren't we much more like the butler? Aren't we the one who forgets God and all the great things that he's done for us and aren't we the ones who forget our brothers and sisters in need have done so much for us Lord help us not to be like that help us guard us God from the sin of forgetting now the sin of forgetting is a bit of a strange sin isn't it because it's not deliberate it's like it's not like you're scheming evil against a person it's not as if you choose to forget them, but there's just something where we get caught up in the busyness of life and we forget a name, we forget a need, we forget a situation that deserves our attention. Lord, help us not to be those people who forget you and forget others as well. Anyhow, Pharaoh had a dream. And notice that in the dream, verse 1 says... And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream and behold he stood by the river. What river? There's only one river in Egypt and it's the Nile. That river that gives life to all of Egypt by the way that it floods and fertilises and waters the land on either side of its banks each year. Egypt was the breadbasket of the whole Mediterranean world in those days all the way through to the Roman Empire right? it really was, it produced enough grain for the entire Mediterranean basin, that's how spectacular it was Genesis 41, 2-7 suddenly there came out, up out of the river seven cows, fine looking and fat and they fed in the meadow then behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ugly and gaunt, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. And the ugly and gaunt cows ate up the seven fine-looking and fat cows. So Pharaoh awoke, 
He slept and dreamed a second time, and suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seven thin heads, blighted by the east-west, sprang up after them. And the seven thin heads devoured the seven plump and full heads, so Pharaoh awoke, and indeed it was a dream. Okay, so this is a weird dream. All right? Notice what happens here in verse 2. There came up out of the river seven cows. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> if a cow wandered into the Nile, it would immediately get eaten by crocodiles. Right, in real life. But here we've got seven cows coming up out of the river. And then there's these other seven skinny, ugly looking cows. And you can just imagine them. They march right up and gobble up the fat cows. This is dreamland. All right, we're not talking about something that could ever happen in real life here. So Pharaoh awoke and indeed it was a dream. Hello. <laughs> there was a dream but there was something about it. He didn't know it yet but he would later in the story. And that was that this was a message from God for him and for his nation. The whole rather strange dream with seven fat cows, skinny cows, the grain and all of that. It was a message from God. Now repetition is one of the most important principles in learning. It really is. You know, it's almost the preacher's fantasy to think that if I preach one good message on something, everyone's going to get it. It doesn't work out like that, does it? The things that are good, the things that are important, we need to hear them again and again. Well, I'm not speaking to each one of you individually here, but the person next to you needs to hear it again. <laughs> so just for the person next to you, play along and listen carefully to this principle, okay? God speaks to us today, and if you're looking for a message from God, open your Bible and read it. This is where God speaks. This is where God wants us to seek his voice. The Bible is not God, but it is his voice. And we hear the voice of God speaking in and through the scriptures. You know, I'll add that there's also times when God may speak to you or me through a dream. He may speak to you or me through a vision or a prophetic word. But that's not how we live every day. Chasing after a spoken word from God to figure out what we need to do today. Pastor, Pastor, I need a word from God for you as to what dress I put on this morning. Right? We don't we don't live our lives like that, do we? No. <laughs> God knows where to find us. And sometimes to emphasise something and we realise that God may speak to us in all those ways as well. Simply put, we understand that God speaks authoritatively and where, where, we are, where we seek his speaking is in his word. We believe what it says in Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets and has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the worlds Jesus Christ is the living word of God and we look to him again and again at the same time we realise that God may speak in a different way even today but it all comes back to being measured by judged by and evaluated by his word the Bible Okay, that's where we find the authoritative word. Now back to our story of Joseph. 41.8 Now, what's that? Okay. Oh, it's a different translation. Sorry about that. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all of its wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. 
tell him what they meant. That's what the NLT says. That's a good. That's good. That one. When Pharaoh woke up in the morning, notice what it says in verse eight: his spirit was troubled. Pharaoh did not take this as merely an ordinary dream. There was something about it that was more than just a disturbing dream. He summons his magicians and his priests, his astrologers and all the rest. And he tells them, here's my dream, tell me what it means. And none of them could interpret it. Now these guys were pretty good. He had some of the best and brightest men in the ancient world in his court. They weren't dopey people. These were really smart guys. And they couldn't interpret the dream for him. Do you remember what Joseph told the butler and the baker in prison? He said this in chapter 40, verse 8. He said, Do not interpretations belong to God? You see, the interpretation belonged to God, and God was not giving that information to the magicians and the astrologers and the counsellors of Egypt, is he? He's not going to do that. He has his man, he has his man on the spot, right where he wants him, to quote from the book of Esther, for such a time as this. That's where we come to verse 9. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults today. <laughs> when Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream in one night, he and I. Each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass just as he interpreted for us, so it happened. He restored me to my office and he hanged him. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved and changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. You see that picture in verse 9? The butler admits that despite the kindness that Joseph had shown him while he was in jail, he had forgotten all about him. Maybe we could have a look at a different way that this story could have played out and what the results would have been if Joseph was not exactly where God wanted him to be. What if the butler had remembered Joseph right away? And when he got, got out of prison, the butler says to Pharaoh, there's this Hebrew prisoner, you've got to get him out of prison. And Pharaoh frees him from prison. Joseph goes back home to Canaan. You know, it could have easily worked out that way, couldn't it? You know what happens then when the butler remembers that there's a Hebrew servant who knows how to interpret dreams. Where would he know to find him? He's back in Canaan. Well, forget about that. You know, he's away somewhere. I've no way to find him. I can forget about that thing. God had a plan for leaving Joseph in prison and this is disturbing for some people. Two long years. Even though it was difficult and discouraging, God had a plan. He's working plan A, friends. <laughs> He's working plan A. And nothing is going to stop it. That plan was that when the time was right and Joseph was ready to be raised to prominence, they would know exactly where to find him. Where's Joseph? He's in prison. He hasn't gone anywhere. 
because God has a destiny for Joseph far, far greater than getting him out of prison. God had a destiny for Joseph to save the world. Literally. You know, I'm going to take it back to the big picture, plan A. God, Joseph did say the word. He did because without Joseph and what God did through him, the Hebrew people would have been wiped out in the famine. And Jesus Christ, our Messiah, the Saviour of the world, would not have been born. And God would have been proven a liar because he'd broken his covenant with Abraham. All right? So that was never going to happen, was it? So to verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon, and he shaved, changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. I like that word, quickly. I also like suddenly. You know, in, in Mark's Gospel, there, suddenly it's everywhere, right? <laughs> Acts chapter 2. Suddenly there was the sound as of a rushing mighty wind, <coughs> right? and tongues of fire came and sat on them. Right? Suddenly, it's quickly. It's... So they brought him up out of the dungeon quickly. You can see it shows us in those times we think that God isn't doing anything. Or God is doing something very important. Maybe the most important thing. Now here's the hard bit. He's developing our character and transforming us into the image of Jesus Christ. God was doing a lot in those two extra years Joseph was in prison. And you know what he was doing. He was doing the interior work on Joseph himself. It was a time of building character. Gone is the kid that was blurting out uh, dreams that should never have been spoken out, but that he should have kept to himself. That, kid, that, that, that the young boy is gone. We have a man now, a mature man, whose character has been moulded in adversity of the most terrible kind and injustice. And yet he never forgot God, did he? He never forgot who he was. I love the words of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Do you like, do you like that verse? Do you know what the verse is? And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. That's a good verse, isn't it? You know, that verse has comforted me, probably you as well, many times over the years. All things work together for good, but don't forget the next verse. What does the next verse say? Romans 8.29 for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So you know what God's foreordained plan is for each of us? The big part of God's plan for each one of us is to conform each one of us into the image of Jesus Christ. To make your character more like Jesus. To make you love more like Jesus loves. To make you forgive more like Jesus forgives. To make you bold more like Jesus bold. To make you a man or a woman of prayer. And so on and so on. That's, that's the reason why we have church. Is to equip you to be more like Jesus. And to try and awaken that spark within each one of you. To desire, to want to be more like Jesus. Lord, I want to be more like you today. So sometimes, friends, this is God's work in our life. One point before I go on to the next verse. In this story, we see again how Joseph mirrors that of Jesus. Joseph went from a long period of obscurity, some 30-odd years, and then quickly burst upon the scene. 
and that's how it was with Jesus. For 30 years he seemingly doing nothing in obscurity. Few people knew him, but when the time was right to enter into ministry it seemed as if he exploded onto the scene. Now verse 15. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I've had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It's not in me, God. Sorry, it's not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. You've got to love Joseph, haven't you? Love his character. He could have thought, This is all right, isn't it? <laughs> I'm out of prison, I've had a bath, I've had a shave, nice clothes. I haven't had a decent bath or a shave in a long time. I'd, I'd like to stay out of prison. And the only way I stay out of prison is by becoming personally valuable to Pharaoh. I need to take a lot of credit upon myself here. So he could well have said that. Yes, Pharaoh, I am the guy who interprets dreams. So tell me all about it. I'm glad you called for me. You need to keep me around. He could have said that very easily, couldn't he? But instead he said, and I like the NLT translation here, but God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. Now verse 17 then. Then then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I stood on the bank of the river. And he goes on to describe the dreams to Joseph, ending with the disturbing statement, But there was no one who could explain it to me. Now picture a 30-year-old Joseph standing before Pharaoh. He's Hebrew. He's not Egyptian. He's dressed like an Egyptian and he's learned how to speak Egyptian. So he's not speaking Hebrew, he's speaking Egyptian. He stands there. He's been a slave or a prisoner or both for 13 years. And God has done a remarkable work in him. So he looks at Pharaoh, the ruler of a vast empire. At that stage, probably the most powerful man on earth. And he was the kind of a man who's, by whose word men live or die. He looks at Pharaoh straight in the eye and he says this in verse 25. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. And the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, seven years, seven years of famine will arise and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice, because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. What a moment that was. He delivers this message, not filled with anger, but filled with strength. Pharaoh, I'm God's messenger, and this is the message of God. The dreams of Pharaoh are one. And off he goes. And he ends the thought in verse 32 with the idea that the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established for God. Joseph saw com confirmation in the repetition of the dream even before it came to pass. This was confirmed. Jesus knew a principle that would be revealed later in Scripture. The principle is in Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. By the mouth of two or three witnesses shall the matter be established. In other words, it wasn't enough just to have the dream. 
God gave it twice to confirm it. God's word is true. And it's more important than ever that God's people cling to that principle. Let me wrap it up then with a look at this phrase in verse 32 where it simply says, God will shortly bring it to pass. It was going to happen. There was no doubt about it. Now why did God bring this word to Pharaoh that there were going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine? Why did this tremendous word come at this time in this place? You'll have to come back next week. <laughs> As the life of Joseph turns, God's going to do something spectacular with this word. Oh, I think it's pretty exciting to see what he does with it. Joseph was God's messenger. And God has sent his final and perfect message, messenger to us, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, follow me. Just follow me. Don't worry about chasing after prophecies and dreams. You just follow me and I'll lead you through everything. In John 10, 27 and 28, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they will follow me. And I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You don't have to despair, friends. You don't have to worry. He will guide you. As the song says, look to Jesus. <coughs> Amen.